All right, recap time. <clears throat> All right. On the last episode of Dawnhaven, episode four, the thief. Um, we. Uh... <laughs> uh -huh. I'm trying to remember yeah, where it started because I remember I got ganked instantly. Wait, was that mm -hmm. the same episode? Yeah, it was. It was okay. Okay, so... I got it. <laughs> now you go. Okay. All right. Well, we went to uh, the building and there were books there, and uh, and and uh, Cheeto got attacked by a book, and then we went outside to go get food, and then Sarah appeared attacking Ramleth, and uh, they had a fight seemingly to the death but it was also said not to the death but it really felt like death to ramleth and she almost died she probably should have died if not for the intervention anyway point being uh saris then fucked off ramleth got healed it was very emo we went to the north to go get donks uh little gauntlet thingy uh, Armor. uh no gauntlet thingy. i thought it was a hand a glove oh. It was. It is a, a, it is a gauntlet. Yeah, it is, a, you are correct. Fuck you, Nat. It covers. It covers his whole hand all the way up until yeah. his forearm. Good as old. much as I hate to do this to you, Nat and Sheep is right. Yeah. Let's go. I thought, it was more. I thought it was more than just the forearm. All right, I was listening. Let's go. Um. It can form into. It can form into other things, and there are other that's pieces of armor out there. That's that's what you're thinking of. Yeah, we went to the big old boulder, and then we dug with uh, Cheeto's body yeah. into the earth, and whilst he looked really aroused, and then we um. We got the gauntlet out. It was Donk's uh, uh, ancestors thingy. His great, 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 great grandfather. Oh, you actually missed two greats in there. Great, great grandfather. Yeah. And uh, and then after getting that, we rode the magic carpet all the way back south down the Hero's Way, where we found Ricky, who uh, was a very nice British man. We got our, go our medallion from him, and he was like, oh, we'll go to Goldgrain together. Yippee! And then to Sunspire. And now we have an ally. He's not from... He's not British. He's Erishel. He's Erishel, which sounds suspiciously British. <laughs> 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 he's Arishelin, technically. He's Arishelin, aka British. <laughs> well, Arishel no longer exists as a country. The, the train has been, the train and people have been killed enough that they don't exist. By anymore. the British! Yeah! Damn, that was, I, was, I was about to say, that, that's just happy thinking right there. Britain no longer exists. All I the Brits to... are gone. Yeah. But either way, um, you guys have a companion that you are currently flying. Um, uh, oh, by the way, if you take the measurement tool and you click anywhere and measure with it, it measures in days. I wonder oh. how this occurred. That's crazy. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so now you can find out how long it's actually going to take to get to gold grain. Isn't this by horse, not by magic carpet? It is by horse, so you have like you have basically a straight line as opposed to you can go through roads if you wanted to oh. do that. Oh, we're gonna go as the crows fly. Six point two one days. Mm -hmm. And you guys are uh pretty close to where Ramleth's actual icon is. So. Oh what? We barely fucking got anywhere. Jesus. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I thought, I thought we were further than that. Yeah, I thought we were further than that too. That's crazy. Well, yeah, you would be because we ended as you guys were flying. So, is there anything you guys are going to do whilst flying? What is your what is your plan? What are you doing? Okay. Are you going to grill Ricky some more? Nah, he's good. <laughs> um, what? Also, just just quick, because now we're on a second uh session without Larue. How are we like? Do we just pretend he's like there, but he's not really saying anything, or like what? No, no. Just pretend Leroux's he's not there. doing something. Oh, he's just not with us. Okay. I. <laughs> All right. So to start this session, uh, Ramleth throws the robot off the carpet. <laughs> Why would you throw the robot off the carpet? He's busy. <laughs> <laughs> No, he's already, tra he's already transformed himself into like a fishing net or like a racket for racquetball. Wait, or no, like can he? All right, random... can he be my weights for the session? Yes, I one. will allow it. <laughs> <All right. laughs> 
R- Ramley straight up is like fucking Toy Story Andy. I don't want to play with you anymore. <laughs> Just fucking drops him off the carpet. That's brutal. Uh, Donk is gonna be talking to uh, talking to his uh, his ancestor. That's gonna be uh, most of that. And I named him Salnazar. Salnazar. That's right. Because a long, long time ago, you have an elf inside of your lineage at one point early on, and then it transferred to ogres, and then eventually went to full orcs, which is why you exist the way you are. But first things first, Nazma. The evening that Ramleth is awake and interacting with the queen herself, your character is sleeping. Okay, you're sleeping peacefully on this rug because um, currently in the northern hemisphere it is considered summer. And oh, we're just coming off of winter because that's where the Scovia is right now. Um, so it's, it's very cool, but also hot enough that you're, you're perfectly fine, especially as a water ganasi. You're like content with whatever temperature it is pretty much because you can mm-hmm. control a lot of that aspect. And you have a dream. And when you interact with this dream, you just pretend that you're being you and you just do do stuff, okay? Because you awaken, you, you lay down on the magic carpet and you can hear like mm-hmm. the wind passing over you. And you awaken in a large... The worst part is the only big description I have is, you, have you, if you've seen the Harry Potter movies, you know that tent that they go into at the Quidditch match? Yeah. It's similar to that, except it's dimly lit and only lit by a singular sort of campfire directly in the middle. There's a hole on the, in the upper part of it where the smoke is basically just billowing out. And okay. you awaken as if you were sleeping on a bedroll in one of the outer sections of this gigantic tent. Mm-hmm. What are you doing? Uh, I don't know. I approach the the campfire, try and get like a little bit more light, and try and see what's in the the tent around me. Around you in the tent yeah. are. Why don't you make a make a history check for me, please? Okay. Oh, I thought it was gonna be a one for a second. Then <laughs> it was, it looked like a one for me. It really <laughs> did. It really did. As you're walking down the steps that have been makeshift put around the outside of the tent, you step down and the and the wood like creaks for a moment. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden the room not fills, but is filled with glittering gold in every single section of it, except for the the section that you're in. Basically, it's just your bedroll, but the rest of it is completely filled to the brim with gold gemstones. Um, treasure. There's like no weapons, but literal like currency, and and these are all currencies that you've never seen before. Like if you were to actually look at the coins, there are coins with people's heads on them. Where that's not really how the the coinage works in this world. There's like the stars from Scovia. There are lions from another. There's like a a coin in the shape of a lion that has like a gear on the other side of it, and like literally, there's coins in every shape. That you've ever, you've never seen before, and then there are like fully cut gemstones. There's a cut diamond that is the size of a softball. Jesus. And it's just chilling. Damn. Okay. Uh, what are you doing? I want to start like picking up some of the gemstones. I'm like apprehensive to pick up the diamond because it's obviously the most valuable. But like I kind of just start fiddling with them, probably making like a fair amount of noise. Um, but I eventually end up like walking towards the diamond, but I don't actually want to touch it yet. As you sort of traverse your way through the currency and you're just like looking and picking up gems, do you lose your characters more attracted to gemstones than gold? Mm, maybe, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I like I'm looking at everything, but I'm only really picking up the gemstones. Sure. The gems are like not normal size either normally gemstones are like yay big to put in rings and things like that no these Uh are like Uh like huge (laughs) cut like spherically cut like super crystalline polished to mirror shine 
like every every kind of gemstone you could think of, include up to and including like opal and tourmaline and onyx and diamond and all these things. And as you're traversing and picking all these things up, you hear a, sh- a major shift as a bunch of coins fall down a sort of pile nearby. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> I don't know how adventurous I want to be. <laughs> I, I want to start like walking over towards the the shifting of like the gold and the gemstones. I want to find out what's maybe being disturbed or or what's happening over there. As you walk over to this huge pile of coins that has begun to like tinkle down, you see the vi- like the you see the outline of like a young male humanoid that's just laying in the coins like not completely naked, covered loosely by a fur of some sort, like a like a a white a brown a brown fur that has like white tips, and he's just loosely covered by it. And as you approach, you're making like a little bit of jingling noise as you walk over the coins, and he sort of stutters awake and looks at you. Oh, greetings. Who are you? <laughs> oh my, I'm Nazma. Who are you? Oh, <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. And he takes the he takes the sheet off, and he stands up, and he stretches, and he is like he's fit, but from head to toe, he has little tiny text that is been tattooed all over every single part of his body. When I say that, like his fingertips, his knuckles like all of it has this like sort of strange runic writing all the way up until the bottom of his neck and onto his chin can i read any of it there are parts of it that are readable but you could tell that it's like every language but they're they appear to be names i see i see interesting i i ask him again who like who are you um i hmm what plane are we on? I don't even know how to answer that. Oh, well, let me go to the fire. I'll explain. As he grabs a robe, like he literally like puts his hand out and a robe comes from like one of the sides and you're like, what? <laughs> he, pulls, he puts on a robe <laughs> and he goes and sits down by the fire. Uh, what do you drink? Just water. Yeah, just water for now. You don't maybe. want tea. You don't want hot no. cocoa. You don't <laughs> want <laughs> coffee. You don't <laughs> want plain old water. apple juice. <laughs> orange juice. Shh. I'll take an orange juice. I could do orange juice. <laughs> he snaps his fingers, and a rattling chain of cups like starts to rattle all their way across to you. One of them turns to you and fills from the bottom with orange juice. That's amazing. Well, let me introduce myself. They call me... Hmm. Maybe Mm -hmm. it's a bit... It's a bit pressing to say, but they call me... Mr. Worth. Here, anyway, or on most material planes. Yo, is that Mr. Dollar Dollar Bill? <laughs> ching ka ching, Mr. Worth. <laughs> Dude, I want this guy in my dream. <laughs> and I've, the, seen, uh, I've seen that you picked up some of my objects. Just curious, just infatuated by this. Well, side no, of these I'm. You're allowed to keep them. I, can I... keep them? Well, they have no value to me. None. Not Zero. even sentimental value. No. How did you acquire so much if it means so little? Well, one of them I pulled out. Uh, one of the ones that you have. And he points at, like, because I assume that you have your backpack or whatever. Or are you just carrying them with you, like, eggs or something? <laughs> how how it's are a, you? It's, I would say, like, eggs. Like, I've just kind of, like slotted them into my arm and I'm trying to like collect all the different <laughs> still colored ones of them and I'm still kind of just like you know when he saw me for the first time my arm like this one kind of went over the top of the other of the other gemstones you know they were all lined up like this and I just kind of went like this 
and he's he's like he points at one and it sort of gently glows. He said, I pulled that one out the belly of a bullet. And then that one I uh created in someone's brain. Well, that one you, you keep that one. <laughs> no, it's still valuable, it's still technically exactly what it is. It's bloodstone. So that one is not what you think it is, and it has no value on this plane. But you could do some fun stuff with it if you do enough research or if you manage to go to the plane that it's from. And <clears throat> the one he's pointing at is a clearly a gemstone, but it's glowing from the inside, and it has a bunch of, like, it appears to be rock-like seams all through it. He says, well... It can fuel all sorts of advanced technology and things like that, but I don't know if it functions on your home plane. Speaking of which, if you'll allow me... And he offers his hand to you. Okay, I take it. He holds any... Like, thinks for a second. Oh. Okay. I know exactly who you are then. Your father would be very angry with me. So I'm going to have to ask you to leave. How do you know who my father is? For someone like me, you have to know. Because the plane that you're from, and many other planes, he is their progenitor, the father to many. And he values, surprisingly, for a djinn, he values his children highly. And what I'll say is, just in case he's looking, uh, the, ge the gems that you're taking are a gift from me to you. So just, I can still take the, take the gems, I say, yes, as I'm like you, trying to you, grab uh, more with my spare <laughs> hand. <laughs> I will say, don't Not take research. too many. Don't take too... You can only hold so much. Mm-hmm. But we will see each other again soon. Because there's something I need you to get me. Are we talking like my soon or your soon? Because I feel like we have different your concepts soon. of time. Okay. You're going to Sunspire at some point, correct? Yes. There's a man who has a gem. I need his gem. And I will pay you for it. What color? What size? We're talking about. What are you going to use it for? You'll know it when you see it. Okay. I promise you, you'll know it when you see it. Okay. It's a gem that is unlike any other that I've ever seen. I will pay you for it. I'm not paying him for it. If he wants to give it to me, he pays with his life. I'm giving you the opportunity to give it to me for money. But I get to keep my life. Of course. I'm not going to anger your father. I'm not stu I might be I might be dumb, but I'm not stupid. Aren't we all? To a degree. Well, it was a pleasure meeting you. Mm -hmm. Good luck explaining that to your allies. And he snaps his fingers and you appear like sitting up with a glass of orange juice and a handful of gems <laughs> on the carpet as as Ramleth is like <laughs> Do I have like a blanket on me or anything like that? No, while I'm you're sleeping? just you're just chilling. <laughs> oh, I'm just chilling. I, 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 sorry, dude. Oh, uh, hey, I <laughs> look right, yeah. right at you. Uh, where the fuck did you get that? Did you get that? Where did I get what? <laughs> the things in your arm. You mean Cheeto? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yep. That's what I meant. That, same. same. Uh, well, he turned into some dumbbells, so I've been working out. <laughs> obviously, what that you, you can't avoid this question. Where did you get all those gems from? <laughs> they were a gift from someone in my dream named Mister Work. I don't know who he is or how it occurred, but apparently he knows my father. Who's your fa your father? Uh, just well known man. Yeah. Why well, is he famous? Is Donk awake? Yeah, Donk is definitely awake after <laughs> this conversation. 
I really wanted to yell at each other. Where'd you get that? Where the hell do you get that from, bro? It's just orange juice. I was trying to have a nice conversation with Sal Nazar, and you two are being very loud. I apologize, Dunk. I don't apologize. I'm trying to like stuff the gems into my bag. Hey, I don't. I don't want Dunk asking questions too. You know. Dong, she's ho she's hiding gold from us. What? Oh, I... When did you get rich, Nazma? On God, have no gold. It's a, it's just all the gems. <laughs> gems that... are gold. Gems can be That's... exchanged for gold. Gems are truly not gold. <laughs> I would definitely say they're a different set of values altogether. <laughs> uh, no one asked you really. Than gold. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I don't even know how to explain it, Donk. It's like when um. What were the elephant people names again? Loxodons. The Loxodons. Loxodons. It's, like, it's like when we had that one special night with the Loxodons, except this time, I swear, uh -huh. I didn't take anything. But I was like teleported into another realm and everything that happened there came back with me. Including these gems and glass of orange juice. Wait, so is Mr. Worth your ancestor? I no no it, it he in no way implied that but he knew uh my father and so I assume they're frenemies acquaintances in the same circle of some form but I don't know anything more I don't even think that's his real name I think it's just an alias that maybe people in this realm know him by who is this guy sorry what does he look like uh tattoos just he, he, straight he, up tattooed. Uh... Uh, his species was very much elven. You're not really sure what okay. subtype, but he's very much elven. Like, looked similar to me, except tattoos all over his body. He's a Janasi? <laughs> no, he's not exactly. I couldn't tell, but like some form of elf or... Oh, elf! Oh, I spit on the coffee. I, I hate those an, guys. <laughs> I don't know if he was an elf, but that's what I'm saying. He just looked like that, like very humanish. But not a human. You gotta keep our ride clean. <laughs> Doc is gonna pull out a rag and start scrubbing at the carpet. You can spit off of the carpet. This is the, the one. This is the this ground is, a is down carpet. there. <laughs> spit off the side of the carpet. <laughs> well, it sounds like you had some sort of magic dream, which, as yeah. a great wizard, Donk knows very much about. Mm hmm. What, what do you think causes them, Dunk? Well, did you get into some sort of agreement, or did you did you did you sign your life away or your soul? I did not. I made no mm. yes or no's, no promises, no signatures. He simply gave me these gems as a gift, and asked something of me in the future. What? But I technically didn't say yes to it. What? Donk, uh, would I have... Uh, donk. Devin. <laughs> Devin, would I have uh, any, any ideas here? About what? About what happened to her? Uh, about the, the, the nature of... of uh, just like uh, some sort of supernatural creature just giving gifts. Yeah. Make an Arcana check. Anyone who, anyone who wants to, make an Arcana check to see if you under potentially understand... What's what? happening here? Oh, okay, that wasn't so bad. Easy. <laughs> but yeah, Ramleth, no idea. <laughs> um, between Donk right. and Nazma, it's very. Uh, so here's the thing: you there are there are entities that you can filter out. No genie, no fay. Um, no, uh, none of the warlock patrons, for obvious reasons. Um, so it might just be like a powerful wizard that has like a, a demi plane somewhere or potentially a dragon with how much gold. Did you describe the room or anything, Nazma? Or what, what exactly, how much information are you giving? I mean, I'm willing to give it up really, but it's just like, I'm, in, I'm, I'm reeling from all this information. Like, I don't know how to process it, so I don't know how to share it. So it's mm -hmm. like, it needs to be directly or specifically asked mm -hmm. before I can like give it up. Well, from your own 18... Your your sort of instincts point you toward a dragon or similar 
sort of entity, especially when you've seen what your father looks like and how absolutely massive he is mm -hmm. comparatively. It's like it, all all evidence points to dragon. Okay. Yeah, it sounds like a dragon sword to me. Mm. Mm. Just, dragon. I don't even know how I got there though. Like that's oh. the craziest part about it. But it was filled, and like it wasn't just these gems, right? The gems were all I took, but there were like coins, every type of like currency, a bunch of treasures. You name yeah, it. Yeah, dragons can be pretty greedy like that. They don't really care what, what kind of currency. They just take it all. You kept saying it had like no value. Oh, oh. It's because technically money doesn't really have a value except of what we associate it with. Shut up, Ricky. What did he want from oh. you, Nazla? <laughs> I didn't do nothing, I'm Liv. Ricky, well, I have free What do you mean? <laughs> Who? Ricky. Who donk? Yeah. Explain. So donk. Donk. Right. Mm -hmm. Basic economics, right? So I take this gold coin and he shows you uh, one of the gold coins of Don Haven. And he pulls out a, a gold star from Scovia, which is literally in the shape of a star. Both of these have the same weight, right? But an example would be good for this, right? So if we were to buy this magic carpet anywhere in the world, it would probably cost upwards of 10,000 gold, right? Where Scovia, the star, comes from, maybe they have loads of these and it's only worth 800 gold, right? That inherently means this piece of money is worth more than this piece of money. What? Because the exchange rate, right? You could go to Scovia and buy loads of these flying carpets and then go sell them somewhere else and get more money because the gold in Scovia is technically worth more because somebody decided to make loads of magic carpets. So you're saying he has too much gold? He has mm -hmm. so much money. He has so much literal currency that he doesn't care. So why doesn't he give it all away? And then he no. would care about it. Because dragons don't work that way. Hmm. Ramless seems mad from being ignored twice. Does tries one final time. Nazva, what did he want from you? <laughs> I'm sorry, there's so much going on. <laughs> um, but more importantly, Nazma. More importantly, yeah, the exchange rate. I'm gonna know? shove dog off the fucking thing. <laughs> he asked me that. Well, he told me that he would pay me if I got a gem off of someone else in Sunspire. Any, but it was never uh, like agreed that I would. He didn't tell me any information about this gem, nothing about this person. He said I'd know it when I see it, and that's it. That's suspicious. Yeah. How do you know you can trust him? What if the gem I mean, is don't... like... What if it does... You know, what if... It, why You could just keep it. What if you just kept the gem? I mean, or I could just not touch it. Yeah, and that too. I could just ignore it, yeah. He said that he would kill the dude, the guy, the the man, the the broomy, the the brother that has the gem. Oh. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> That's a lot of people. Yeah, uh, that that dude would have to pay f with his life, but he would pay me if I gave him the gem. And I asked him what it was for, and he didn't tell me. Mm. Wait, but what would he pay you in? Because he doesn't view gold as having any worth because he has too much of it. So he what's he going to pay you in? Gold is valuable for us, so he would pay us in gold. Because mm. it is worth to us. Yeah. But I'm also intrigued just to find out what this gem is. Maybe we could do some research and figure out what it is and what this person could be using it for. Sure. I don't like well, it. Well, that's a resounding <laughs> yes. No. Okay, yeah, we're all doing that apparently. <laughs> Got to be careful with supernatural beings. Is it's they <laughs> they like they like messing with people. It's not good. True. Mm -hmm. Donk. That's what my mentor told me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Donk, yeah. you understand that you're a supernatural being, right? 
Huh? <laughs> no, I'm just Donk. Yeah, but you're a powerful wizard, are you not? I'm going to be a powerful wizard. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. okay. So you're not quite there yet, right? So no, no, you're on not your way yet. to being a supernatural being. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. <laughs> and when I become a supernatural being, don't trust me anymore. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> beings that get bad... too much power. They, they, you don't want to mess with them. One thing I can tell you from personal experience is that weapons also considered that as well. There are some weapons that are very corrupting. Oh. I have personal experience with a friend of mine who died during the war in Aeroshell. His name was Mogamak. He ended up getting taken over by his sword. He became an entirely different creature altogether. Sounds like he was weak. Yeah, that's why you got to be careful with artifacts. Like, yeah. uh, you know, you just can't pick <laughs> any random thing you find on the ground and just attach it to your body because it can corrupt you and change you. You got to be wise about magic. Isn't that right, Salnazar? <laughs> very mm -hmm. true. Very true, Donk. <laughs> yes, very wise. Very wise. So wise. Donk, donk your, your mind is a absolute fortress. There is no breaking you. That's true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I work very hard on my mental fortitude with my mentor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you'll, you will one day become a great wizard. Thank you, Nazma. I think so, too. <laughs> Especially now that I have Selnazar. So are yeah. we going to go get the the gem? Uh, I I think it's like, you know... It's not a pressing issue because you're kind of right, Donk. You know, obviously Salnazar was uh, an outlier. It was a great artifact to toy with, but this gem, questionable. No, Salnazar is different because uh, Salnazar is family. Mm, mm, mm. And we definitely knew that before we touched it. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. mm. Maybe you didn't, but as a powerful <laughs> wizard, I, I knew. Where is uh, the uh, the magic carpet currently heading? Uh, it's currently staying close to the road because this, the close to the short distance between two points is a straight line. So you guys are like up here. Oh, we're, we're heading to Goldgrain, right? That's yep. what I said. Yeah. Why are we going to Goldgrain again? To get supplies in it. Yep. <laughs> In it? Shut up. In it? In it? <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> Ricky, Ricky, you uh, you know your way around uh, Sunspire. Uh, I do. I do. You you ever heard of something like this? Hmm. Describe it to a Nasma. What was it? I I don't even know. All I know is that it is a gem, and when we see it, we will know. I don't know the color, the size. I don't know who has it. Nothing. I know what Where it is. You, you already know. I do, yeah. Of course I do. I'm, I know I'm paid to know that. Or well, technically I pay other people to know it. But, <laughs> so, the gemstone you're looking for is about yay big. That's big. It's on a giant pedestal at the very top of a tower where it generates enough light that at night time, the man who owns it can turn it on and it will illuminate the entirety of Sunspire. Ooh. All right. We have to take that. I'm vetoing this. This is fuck. I'm not getting involved. <laughs> I, I can. But that would put every. If we took that, that would put everybody in darkness. Oh, no. Sunspire is not always in darkness, but if they need it, they can use it. Yeah, but, you know, when you need it most, that's when you need <laughs> <laughs> That's when you need it. <laughs> when you need it most, that's when you need it. And that would, that, I don't, that sounds bad. Again, mental fortress, for sure. Just, just seems like, I mean, like, I'm down. We go and get this, ga this gauntlet for Donk, right? Makes him stronger, supposedly. That's fantastic. I love that. This? This is just putting my life at risk for fucking nothing. I don't, I don't give a shit about gold. I only care about being strong, right? You know, if he was giving us a weapon or something, at least, maybe. Uh, this, eh, eh. 
You know, Ramlet, you can exchange gold for weapons. Mm -hmm. I can also kill people for weapons. <laughs> yeah, but that's illegal in most cases. Not if I find them in a dark woods outside of cities. Oh, it, it's, it's very much still illegal, Ramlet. You can't just kill people just to kill people. Well, no, we... I think we should. I would listen to Ricky. It sounds like he knows about illegally killing people. Sounds like Ricky wouldn't last two weeks in the, in the Dominion. <laughs> I'm pretty well, sure he makes, illegally okay. killed an orphanage, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he did kill an orphanage. <laughs> Hold on, Ramlet. What makes you think I haven't been down there? Huh. You're alive? <laughs> well, about it. I know loads of people who've been down there and still alive. Oh, yeah? yeah? Name one thing about the Dominion. Oh, I know who the Sawtooth Serpent is. I've met him myself. Okay, what <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? Remleth, I've been adventuring for the last 35 years. I've seen every corner of this world. I've been Actually, every I've underground. I've been all over the place, right? I've died four times. Four times? Why do they keep bringing I've... you back? <laughs> because I have people that love me. Uh, are you a lich? No, no. Oh. Dunk, He's in order to be a lich, in order to be a lich, you have to be a wizard, right? And then you have to go do a ritual to turn yourself into a lich later on. I'm not oh. a lich. If I was a lich, I would be undead. And Ramlet, who's very clearly a paladin, would have major issues if I was, a, if I was undead because she'd know it. Wait, sure. Ramlith, if I became a powerful <laughs> wizard and became a lich, would we not be friends anymore? Devon, am I allowed to be friends with him? <laughs> that doesn't oath break, does it? Your your god is not specifically anti lich. Okay, tight. I would definitely say that. All right, cool. But her 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 stuff is not specifically anti lich. That's <laughs> boggers. Um, <clears throat> sorry. Anti donk is a different thing. <laughs> uh, donk, if you became strong in any capacity, then I might think you were of the of standing by my side. Oh, okay. You hear that, Nazma? Yeah. We broke the ice. All I have to do is become a lich. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's this motherfucker up. Let's go, donk. Okay. <laughs> Ricky, giant, how would I become a lich? The, <laughs> the giant quest text comes across the screen. <laughs> to become a lich. <laughs> to the right, become smaller. <laughs> new new After goal, that, become a lich. God. Step three, become <laughs> friends with Ramlin. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I happen to know someone that we could go talk to about it if you want to while we're in Sunspire. No, that's okay. I've got plenty of years of life left, so I don't need... There's no rush on becoming no, a lich no, just yet. No, I'm just saying, if you want information on it, I happen to know a subject expert. <laughs> don't, oh. You don't have to become a lich to be my friend. Thank you. Thank you, Nat. I appreciate friend. that. Yeah, you hear that, Ramley? <laughs> we're friends. No, no. Yes, we are. No. <laughs> this is an insufferable carpet ride. <laughs> are we there yet? <laughs> are we there yet? Points at the ground. Me? McDonald's! McDonald's! <laughs> yeah, I'll get a double cheeseburger, please. No, at 4 from King. <laughs> from, to ensure I have double fountains going on. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, so... Um, <clears throat> what we'll do is we'll skip, unless you guys are going out of your way to do stuff no. over the next handful of days. It's going to take you about three and a half days to get there. It basically cuts the ride time by half because of terrain and all the other stuff. Um, Don't teach me how to fire bolt. Okay, you hold your staff out like this, and you what say, fireball. Well, no. Donk, 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 uh. donk. Yeah. Donk. Look at your hand, donk. 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 Yeah. You don't have to do that anymore. So what you do now oh. is I, that's what I'm here for. You take your hand oh. and you point it out like this. Yeah. And then you choose, a, you choose a damage type. And then your beam will come out that. If you want it to be fire, it's fire. If you want it to be 
Acid, it will be acid. Can I try Salzano's as our own? <laughs> Wait, no, here you go. You can have my staff. Because okay. I've become so powerful, I don't need the staff anymore. See, watch. Fireball! <laughs> and a beam of fire shoots like, nape, like a flamethrower out of his palm. And he accidentally bites down an orphanage. <laughs> hey, the orphanage was on purpose, but I didn't know oh, there, were, there were children in it. My bad. Yeah, I nobody expects to, uh, children to be in an orphanage, Nazma. <laughs> it wasn't. We hadn't been in an orphanage for a long time. Oh, Ricky. <sighs> You'll get used to it, bud. <laughs> Um, since the, since Ricky said he'd been to the Dominion, uh, he should, Ram must become a lot more sour. Like, you know, you know, in, in anime where there's like these little purple, like, like animosity lines, that like kind of, you know, aura yeah. coming off someone. That's kind of like Ramleth right now towards Ricky. <laughs> like she clearly wants something to do with him, but not on this stupid carpet. <laughs> <laughs> Ramlet, are you jealous that somebody else has been to the Dominion beside you? Why would I be jealous, Don? That's my home. I, <laughs> I grew up there. That's I don't my... know. I have nothing to be it? jealous of. Huh? Mm. Ramlet looks back towards the, the direction they used to be. It's better than this shithole. Yeah. I'll only take mild offense then. <laughs> Well, it's all right. I mean, the Dominion's okay, too. It's just very dark all the time. Yeah, it's great. <sighs> and then you got the vines and all the other bad stuff down there. It's like everything wants to kill you. That's how oh, so the best warriors are made. That's true. That's true. I'll give you that. How many people died in your Apex trial? <sighs> I wouldn't know who died. <laughs> no, you know. I know that you know. <laughs> uh, I only know the people that I put down. But none of them died. Just one was how maimed. Many, how, how many, how, just how many were not maimed but also died? Oh, fuck. Devin, I don't remember. <laughs> you have notes. I you have notes. You recorded it. Notes. That's, uh, I wrote down everything I did. Reads biography. Yes! Damn it, I but didn't we, write down who uh, died! Asterisk there were... Five there, million page dissertation. I there wrote, were no deaths in, in your Apex. That's file. why I didn't write down, because there were no deaths! <laughs> 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 oh, so I guess it's really not that, you know? Yeah, like okay. warriors, we'll huh? restart the conversation. Who died? How many died? Oh, none died. <laughs> so it's not that, that deadly, though. Yeah, not... Uh, you or in general? <laughs> From, uh... uh in general. Oh. Congratulations. Well. I didn't mean to offend you. At all. Ramneth. I didn't mean to do that. So I apologize. Ramneth doesn't do well with apologies. She just kind of gets awkward. <laughs> it's, it's fine. Well. We'll be in gold grain soon, and then I need to go talk to someone, and then we'll be off to Sunspire before you know it. Oh, who are you gonna, gonna talk you... to? Oh, I have to talk to a man who owes me money. Oh, are you an enforcer? Uh, of my own will, yes. Mm, I've met a couple of enforcers. They're not very nice. You're oh, much no, nicer than like, the ones yeah. I met. I like to be nice because I like to be cordial. When I come to you and I say, hey, you owe me money, if you don't give me money, then I take my money's worth of your body parts. Ramlet, I'm yeah. going to need to get you a sword. I don't want a sword. I have my oh, mole. No, <laughs> yeah, can you break someone's legs off with your mole? I can crush their can legs. Do? Yes, but they can still be repaired if you do that. Well, if you cut it off with the right kind of weapon, they can't grow it back. Just admit he has a point. But then I have to use a sword. That's fine. I'll get you an axe. Oh, you know what else? We could go to a blacksmith and get one side of your hammer turned into an axe, and then the other side can be all smashy. That sounds Whoa. fucking awesome. Yeah, I'm in. Yeah, that sounds really cool. That's <laughs> a badass, Ramblet. Yeah, I'm in. You uh, should because, do that. 
You know me, I know a guy. Guys, what are those weapons called? The like the like um on string and it's got like a weight or like a spear type. Tank. A meteor hammer? No, no. It's a kunai? I don't know, I have to I have to type that in. I I don't know how else I can explain it. It's just a, it's just a spearhead on a string. Yeah. It's usually just called a kunai, depending on what culture you come from. Depending on what culture you used it, it's usually just a kunai. I just never knew. They're really cool. You just made me think about weapons, and my brain needed to know the answer. Well, the you. blunt versions are called meteor hammers. That's really cool. And then the spiked version is usually called a kunai, because it's like a specific kind of like spear tip that they use in Japan with that to do that kind of thing, and they're usually meant for climbing. As well, you could bury them into a wall really easily and then use it to climb up like a ninja. Right. I've had to do a lot of research about <laughs> how this stuff works to play this game properly for a long time. So, um, I could be wrong though, there could be a whole new thing that you're thinking about that I don't know. So, the only ones that I know of are media hammers and kunai. So, uh we're going to skip over because nothing can really happen to you. Like there's really not a whole lot of encounters that we could have while you're just flying. So, um, <clears throat> actually, no, that's not true. Uh, let's start it off with NASMA. Is high good or low good NASMA? Uh, low. Low? Well, go and roll me a D100, please. How do I do it again? Uh, uh, you could, what you could do, actually, I added a module. On the left side, there's a dice. If you click that, you can oh, yeah. click that D100. Did you say the low was good? Fuck yeah, I did. Heck yeah. I knew. The day that you start, like, the, the final day of your descent into gold grain, um, you are blessed by... A rock, not just a rock, a giant rock. So a rock is, in D&D, &D, in terms, a bird with, like, a 50-foot wingspan. Mm -hmm. It's like a huge bird of prey. Is ROC, is what it's called. Uh, and they are... Um, the originals, original versions were so big that they could pick up boats, like literal ships. But the version that's your, that's next to you is a relatively smaller version Wait, of it. I know the ones you're talking about. In Age of Mythology, when you play as the Egyptians, they're transport, and they have like little tents at the bottom, and you can transport your military with them. Yeah, that's what a rock is. It's just a huge, enormously upscaled bird. Well, you it. see in <laughs> Dawnhaven... They are protected animals because there are variants of them that are intelligent. Okay. And you are blessed with a sort of sign of good fortune within Donhaven that a rock sort of flies next to you. And it's just like checking you guys out. It's a small one. It's only like 40 feet wide, 40 foot wingspan. So it's not super only. huge. <laughs> oh, well, no, the big ones are up to 1,000 feet wide. Jesus. Like the big, big ones are known to like rip mountaintops off and destroy entire cities if they want to. Can we befriend this dude? Can he be a part of our party? <laughs> Would you like to make an animal handling check? Yeah. I'm going to only going to allow one stuff. animal handling check for this. Okay. So if Nazma would like to, you can try. It, it's sort of face ripped off. <laughs> it looks at you curiously and the coloration and sort of species of this rock specifically is a golden eagle. So it's a completely brown bird with a bright yellow beak, has black talons, and it sort of flies up closer to you. And um, yeah, it gets close enough that you realize the eyeball is like, uh, I want to say like yay big. And it just okay. sort of looks at you <laughs> specifically. Yep. And it puts, it, head, it puts its head over. I reach out. It? And I want to pet him. I, I like tentatively go to stroke his head. And he puts his head down. And uh, do you have any experience with birds in real life? Uh, not overly. No. 
Do you know when they molt and the new feathers come in? Yes. And they have like little sheaths? Yep. It has a bunch of those on its neck feathers. And it's like, hey, help me. Help me out. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean... I, I, I need you to my... preen it. Yeah, I, that's the word. I didn't know the word. I preen this absolute beast of a rock. You, you preen it, and yep. one of the old feathers comes out. So you're, like, preening it, and you're, like, pulling stuff, and it lets you have one of its feathers. And this feather is, like huge huge mm -hmm, feather mm -hmm. right and the funny thing is you look at it and you see it sort of wink at you and then it flies away <laughs> as you're holding this giant brown feather that's so cool it fits in my bag right even with all my gemstones i have enough weight volume wise it would not fit in your bag Damn it. okay well i still want to hang on to it sure is that worth anything? I ask. <laughs> I don't know. I don't even know, but how cool is that? Uh, yeah, that was sick. Yeah, I can't believe I let you touch it. I can really hear it in your voice. That was really sick. Sorry, I'm not that excited. <laughs> Thanks, Ramon. To the right person, you could sell it for quite a bit, I think. That's what I'm thinking. At last, you don't even have to steal that one. Yeah, we don't even have to take the gem now, huh? <laughs> I was taking a nap. Where'd you get the big feather from? Uh, the giant bird that was just flying next to us. Oh! It's called a rock. Oh, it was a giant bird? It was. Yeah. You would have oh. loved him. So mm. you know who would have loved him? <laughs> I don't like birds. Oh! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that little freak really missed out. <laughs> yeah, he really fucking missed out. Who are you talking about? He's already forgotten. <laughs> he's, he's forgotten. Oh, you're talking animals. about Roo Roo, right? <laughs> Roo -roo. Yeah, he does Roo -roo like animals. Him. It's a he little weird. Him. He likes them too much. I mean, I should maybe try and keep this feather away from him when we see him next. Yeah, what are you gonna do with the feather? I don't know. Uh, an old guy. You could so go belt. see a gold grain. I could do something with it. Wow. You know a lot of people. He does I, know a lot of people. Well, in certain circles, they call me the kingpin, but <clears throat> we're going to not say that out loud yeah, ever again. Yeah, that's not a circle I want to be a part ever of. Ever again. <laughs> if anyone would like to make a history check about the kingpin, you're more than welcome to do so. Yeah! yeah. Minus one! <laughs> I got a one! Minus one! <laughs> Oh my god! Yeah, I mean, it's kind of fitting. It I mean, is kind of underground. Fitting, so. What do you know about our fucking politics and culture? Bitch. Yeah, that that is very the fitting, Overlanders. Actually. I know a lot. Uh, <laughs> uh, Donk, you only know the Kingpin as like a a, a sort of rumor in, in the circles that you've rigged. He's only like a a sort of like. Elf on the shelf, that if you do anything, the kingpin knows it. And a lot of, like, elderly moms and grandmas use the kingpin as an idea that if you do something messed up, he'll tell Sant uh, he'll tell uh, Father Snow, and then Father Snow will not give you presents. <clears throat> oh, no. You're the kingpin? So, I, that's the name they gave me. And oh. Nazma, you know the kingpin as basically the spy master. Like, of all spy masters. He has spies in every place in this world. Like, every city, every encampment, there's somebody that he knows. <clears throat> and he has a way of communicating with anyone at any given moment. And basically, if there's an issue that he has to deal with personally, it's kind of a big deal. Okay. All right. Mr. Pink Kingpin, I I'm sorry, I... I, I know it was wrong to steal that loaf of bread, but I was kind of hungry and nobody was going to eat it. It looked like it was just sitting there. I'm, I'm sorry I stole it. I didn't no. know better. No, I'm so, don't, don't kick me off the magic carpet, Mr. Kingpin. <laughs> Unk. I don't even know what you're talking about, Mike. <laughs> oh, but I... They told me that you know everything. I don't. I don't. 
That's a good thing oh. I don't, because I don't want to know it. Okay. A lot of people that know a lot I, of things. That was just a story Donk made up. That, <laughs> that never happened. I didn't do that. It was a test, right, Donk? Yeah. It was, it was a test to see if you knew truth. Or if you, if you were lying. Oh my yeah. God. I was lying. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> I'm so confused. <laughs> you know, He's the kingpin. He knows all the good things what? you do and all the bad things you do. So he probably knows a lot about you, Ramlet. I've never heard of him before in my life, apparently, according yeah, to the dice. I mean, <laughs> how much does... Do, how, how, what, are, what are the secret circles in the underground that you might have a say in, kingpin? Ricky. What do we call you now? What do you just like? Call me Ricky. Just call yeah. me Ricky. Just, just right, We're Ricky. not supposed to say the name off the magic carpet. Please. Isn't that right, Dunk? What? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Ex exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, I know a guy in the in the Dominion. I have a man. I have two men, technically. A woman and a man. <laughs> um well one of them is quite powerful and he has a position high up in some hierarchy about whether or not traders can be sent into the Dominion or they're accepted. So I know a guy that keeps track of everyone that goes in and out of the Dominion. For example, I know that Ramleth came out of the Dominion exactly six, seven days ago. Seven days ago as of right now. Oh. She came alone and she only had a backpack she had a non-magical mole, and she had a basic kit to come up here. She was granted that approximately six days before that, and that's where she's been. She went directly, surprisingly, directly to Stronghold to take part in the thing. That's what I know about Ramleth, because of my men. Only six what? days ago? Ramleth's Ramless fist tightened. She does not like that you know things about her. Nor does she like the idea that someone from above ground knows or has a has a guy in the Dominion sharing information. <laughs> she looks mad, but she also thinks she shouldn't start a fight on that carpet. <laughs> I know the kingpin. Ramlet, I don't know anything about mean... the kingpin. That means nothing to Ramleth. <laughs> Ramleth, does that mean your eyes hurt? Because you know, like when I when I'm in the dark and then I go outside in the light and the light is so bright it hurts my. Is that like it for you? Yeah, the sun sucks. Sun is oh. awful. <laughs> oh, actually, because of that, I have a thing for you. Don't worry. <laughs> and he goes into his pocket, into like he has a coat that has like tons of pockets in it. Literally, so many pockets in the coat. Holy he shit! Comes in and he pulls out a pair of sunglasses. Hands to you. Whoa, you look so cool. I don't take them instantly. <laughs> I'm just like, why? So, you've been adapted to the dark and you came out here and the sun is very bright. Just put them on. Just put them on. Just trust me. Just mm, put them on. Such a They're life changing. Life changing. I hesitantly reach out and take the sun glasses. I look at them. I say, what? <laughs> Just put them, what? put them on your nose. The little part here, he points at it. Put on your nose, and then put the other ones over your ear. I know what glasses are. <laughs> Who you? Well, you see a lot of people wearing glass, reading glasses. Yeah, but you've never seen these before, have you? No, I don't need reading glasses. They're not reading glasses. Hmm. They're glasses that make the sun dimmer. I put them on. You can make the sun dimmer. For for one person. Oh. Don't look at it, Donk. I need oh. you to not look directly <laughs> at the sun. Oh. And as as you put the glasses on, you notice that the whole world dims, and it like your eyes no longer hurt, and it just feels amazing. What the fuck? <laughs> wow, Who made you this? Look so cool. Hey yo. <laughs> I know a guy. You know a lot of guys. Well, no, it's not a guy in this case. It's a, it's a, it's a, a, a thing. It's like a, 
So imagine that you have an alchemist, right? And then he's got a guy, but his guy is actually an ooze that's alive. But the ooze understands everything there is to know about prisms and other sciencey bullshit. And all he does is make stuff for people. And he made those sunglasses, and I killed some guy, and I took him off him, and I was like, what the f- what are these for? And I put them on, I was like, oh, that's neat, I don't need it, but in case I meet someone, fortuitous, you could say, I met someone, and here you go. <clears throat> All right, I look directly at the sun. <laughs> it's, it's, it actually is not painful to do so. Oh my Punk, god. Punk also looks at the sun to see if the sun is dim. <laughs> no. Oh. Donk, oh. donk, donk, stop. Donk. All right. So I, I'm going to have to contact my guy and get Donk some sunglasses. I want to stand now's up my, and flex my, my muscles. Now's my wall here. <laughs> Do you want some sunglasses as well? Why not? We can all look at the sun together then. Sure. Sure. Get it up for oh. the whole party. Dude, I want to yeah. stand up and pull the biggest power flex and just say, I have defeated the sun! <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's so cool. I'm staring so directly sick. at it. <laughs> right. Well, wait, I think I can We're coming up on, on gold, Grain. I need everyone to remember, no kingpin. Just Ricky. Yes. Okay, sir, just Ricky. Ricky. Yeah. Close enough. <laughs> nice. <It's> awesome. <laughs> um, uh, you guys get down off the carpet. It rolls itself up and goes into its case that I think Donk has on his back, right? Yeah. And um, you're in gold grain. Gold grain is a, I want to say, a fairly decent sized city. And as you approached it, I want to say the couple, like, 50 or so miles outside of the main city area are all farms. So this is some of the most, like, when you're looking at the soil that's beneath your feet, it's black because of how rich the soil is with nutrients and everything else that it can come here. So basically everybody everybody farms in gold grain. So nearly all of the, the produce that's produced in Dawnhaven is produced in gold grain, or at least like 75% of it is. There is some everywhere else, but that's just for those specific towns and or cities. So a lot of it is basically is all just produced here. And now that it's springtime, none of the fields are like specifically sprouting or anything, but they begin to plow and prepare the fields for, for growth. Um, what do you guys do? Because you're landing outside the city, the city walls. They're not really walls. They're more like palisades or sometimes not even that, just fences. <clears throat> Can I pull Ricky aside? <laughs> sure. Yay! <laughs> Ramoth, uh, when we get off the, the carpet, Ramoth wants to grab Ricky by the arm and pull him away from the other two. <laughs> sure. Okay. And then I pull him aside out of earshot and I say, look, you seem to know a lot of people and you've been to the Dominion. I want you to tell me everything you know about where the pit vipers are. I don't know. But... If you give me a bit, give me a bit, and I'll get back to you on it. How long's a bit? I don't know. I need to ask some people, and they need to figure out what they can, what the what tools that we have available, because it, it could be as simple as me asking someone, and then they find out that, that where they are immediately, or it could be that a person needs to ask a person who needs to ask a person, and so on and so forth, until we can figure out where they are. But what I could say is that we will find them eventually. I just don't, I can't promise you how long it's going to take. Hmm. Okay. And I apologize for that. But you have to remember, they've been adventuring for a long time. For me, likelihood points to not on this plane, which makes it a lot more difficult for them to be pinpointed. What the hell? Because if they're on this plane, we can just cast a single spell. It will tell us the general area, the general direction that they are from us. If that doesn't work, that immediately becomes more complicated. Hmm. What, do you know where they were last seen? They're somewhere in Scovia. Mm. Way up north. Ah, oh, so annoying. At least that's the last time I've heard of them. But I don't know. They could be anywhere. That's a problem. 
is they are known to have multiple planes of uh, amulet of the planes, which means that they can teleport between planes willy nilly. Okay. Mm, she. But I promise. I promise. I will look into it. I appreciate that. She says, looking away from you. <laughs> also, also another thing is you should know that your mate, Ceres, is going north. <gasps> that towards Aerochelle for some reason. For some reason. Yeah. Mm. At least that's where she left after you guys had your sc had your scuff. Your tiff. Your battle. Fuck. What's even north for her? Hmm. Okay. A lot. There's a lot north. Guess we won't see her for a long time then. Good. Probably. I will be so much stronger the next time we meet. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Is that it? Is that all? Yeah. No. Alright. We'll be in touch. Th 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 she can't get the thank you out. <laughs> I'll take that as a thank you. Well, right, let's go. And he pulls his pack. He pulls his pack on, and he tightens up his straps. You good to go, Nasma? Yep. Don't right. how you feel it. Good. Where are we going? We're go. We're going into the town. What do you mean? No, I thought you were uh, gonna take someone's leg off or something. Oh no, we have to go into the town to do that. So we need to get our implement changed. Meaning we gotta go to the blacksmith first. Right. Ramleth, everyone, follow me. Uh you guys walk in, or you start to walk toward the gate. And the gates are usually either large palisades, stone, metal. In this case, they're just an open and exit and entryway that has like a large um metal sort of cow like what we consider like a modern sort of small gate that's just there to stop vehicles from entering. Um, and the second that they go, he nods at one of the guards. One of the guards nods back, and they just, you guys just walk in. Where, as far as you've seen, everyone is charged some sort of thing for whether it's they have cargo or their bags are searched. You guys just walk in. No issue. Don't go lean over and whisper to Nazma. That's the power of the kingpin right there. <laughs> That's crazy. <sighs> right. Here we are. You guys get inside and you get like a like 100 feet away from the gate. And he turns around and he says, right. So, what I need you to do is look out for a goblin. He's a slimy little bugger. What we're going to do is we're going to threaten to drown him, because I know that he doesn't like water. But luckily we've got a big river and a floating carpet, right? A little bit of implementation in the right way. If he doesn't work, we're going to start chopping his fingers off. But first thing that we need to do, all of this is threatening. We don't actually do these things, Nasma. I saw the look on your face. <laughs> don't worry. I don't do these things myself. I send skulls to do that. Imagine oh, a version of me, but he's nine feet tall and he weighs 600 pounds, right? Imagine that man is usually with me. But this time, I've got Remleth, I've got Donk, and I've got you. So what we're going to do is we're going to leverage the fact that there's four of us against one slimy, no slimy little knob. So, to the blacksmith, and he points, and there's a large, like, gray, light gray smoke coming out of a smokestack nearby. As you guys traverse this sort of... It, it, it would be closer to say that the town itself looks closer to, like, a Wild West village than it does anything else. Right, there are large. It's very much a trading post or a very marketable area in most cases. So a lot of the people here are traders. There's lots of carts and vendors and and saloon style bars, that kind of thing. It's very open. Um, and the blacksmith is basically just a covered building with columns, and everything is exposed on the inside. And there's three people working. Three very. There's two very very strong looking women and a very old looking dwarf when i say old looking dwarf he has his beard braided and then looped three times so his beard is well over like 10 or 12 feet long <clears throat> and it's just in a in a pouch in his apron and he's got goggles on and literally you can't tell what color skin he has because it's just soot all over his body 
and um, one of the large muscular uh, they're all they're all orcish women. The two women that work there are both orcs, so they're very very muscular, and they turn to you as you enter. What do you need? <clears throat> uh, hello. Greetings. Uh, we need some. He'll look at uh. He'll look at Ricky. We need some uh. Um. I know you can we, do it, Donk. I have faith in you. You can arm, talk to it. Armaments. But yeah, what what do you what kind do you need? I don't know. <laughs> you're speaking of. Hold on. You're an orc. Are you not? Yeah, that's me. Hey, there's there's one of us here. And the other woman like takes her goggles off and puts them on her head and she turns and she bites her lip. She's like <laughs> 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 And they both walk over to Donk and they're like, So what's your name? <laughs> and they're both they're both like super built, like very, very strong. <laughs> that's so funny. Uh, d- 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 donk. My name's Donk. <laughs> Donk? What a name. So it's a very strong name, Donk. And what do you do? I like your glove. Thank you. I'm um, a sick uh, glove. Thank you. <laughs> I, uh... I it's, the it's my grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know the difference between a gauntlet, lady. Okay? okay well, I'm just, you call it a glove. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> it, it's a glove. It's a glove with armor on it. it it's my grandpa. <laughs> Sure. Uh, uh, genuinely with this world, wouldn't surprise me. What are you doing here? Uh. <laughs> Look at Riki again. <laughs> <laughs> what What are we doing here? <laughs> Ramleth, would you like to take over for a second? I forgot. Where, where? <laughs> Chop off your fingers and... No! 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 Sorry, 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 sorry. I forgot the... (laughs) What was the initial thing we had to do? Show him your hammer. Show him the hammer. Oh, we're threatening. No! No! (laughs) You guys are so bad at this whole thing. Right, so... We wanted to make a, a hammer... Into an axe. Oh, that's what we're here for. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, well, that's easy. Is it magical? Sorry, I pull out my mole. Uh, uh Donk doesn't know. <laughs> is it? Is it magical? No, it's not magical. Wait, it's not magical. Can I see it? Yeah, it I is get... magic, right? It's, it's plus you, one, so it's you magic. Got the plus oh, it's one. magical because it's plus one. I didn't know that. All right, whatever. Uh, I pull out my, my mole, and I... I look very possessive over it. I I, I kind of like hold it out to them, but like I don't want to give it over. I'm kind of you know when you like show someone your phone, but you're holding <laughs> it with a death grip. You're like, look at this. But like, yeah, you're like you're really it. holding it as this Ramleth with her mall. One uh one of the <laughs> one of the strong ladies, the one with the goggles on her forehead, comes over, <clears throat> puts her hand on her on your shoulder, and goes, "Okay, I can see that you're attached to it." I just need you to let go so we can start working on it. Because we can make one ha- half of this into an axe. It's not an issue. I just need you to let go. I don't really... Please don't swipe with my mom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't trust them. I did, And I kind of look at Ricky and I just go, I didn't know they were going to be ox. <laughs> what does that matter at all? <laughs> what does it matter? Oh, it's because she's racist. <laughs> <laughs> Doc, Doc also <laughs> look, looks at Ricky. I didn't know there would be orcs. <laughs> All right, Doc. You know that you're an orc, right? That these are your yeah. people. These are like your culture. Yeah. But oh, I didn't oh, well, know well, there would be. Here's the fun thing that we I know. I didn't know they would be female and here's, so well, strong. Well, here's the thing, though. Is we know for a fact that Donk has somewhere to stay tonight, right, ladies? And they both <laughs> grin really wide. <laughs> I have a book. <laughs> Doc will hold up his book. Uh, and and the one that's like, uh, like literally looking at you, Ramleth, is like, please, give me the hammer, and I promise I will get it back to you tonight. If you break it, I'll break you. I'll let go of it. I'll make if if I break it, I'll make you a new one. 
Oh, it's a promise, not a threat. I mean, it's a threat, not a promise. I just, what? <laughs> it's both. It's a threat and a promise. <laughs> oh. Okay. And she 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 takes your hammer gingerly and like tests the balance on it. It feels a bit off for some reason. <clears throat> And she takes over the dwarf, and the dwarf like grabs the whole thing one handed, and is like, "It does feel off, a little bit. We'll fix it. We'll fix it." And he's like, literally like, not waving around willy nilly, but like in a very specific way. And he's the most deft dwarf that you've ever seen, and it's actually quite spectacular. Um, <clears throat> is he is he doing the you know the the knife? thing where they spin the knife in the palm of their hand is he doing that he's doing with it with a two-handed weapon small. he's just uh, like <laughs> how's he holding it one-handed i want to hold it one-handed i could hold it one-handed <laughs> <laughs> he's a dwarf no, he's dwarf. a dwarf and he's doing it oh. and they get working on your Ooh. hammer right now that that's done and we got it taken care of which i will pay for by the way i'll get it fixed Right. What we got left on the checklist? We've got to find the little knob. So, <clears throat> he's supposed to be a herder. So he's supposed to have a flock or some sort of, like, animal thing going on. We need to find the smell of animal shite, and we're going to go over there. Donk, use your nose. Figure it out. Okay. Is there any rules against flying in the city? Uh, they prefer it if you didn't do it. But, if we send you up by yourself, it should not be an issue. I'm giving you permission, Donk. Don't worry. Okay. Do it. And Donk will roll out the, will roll out the, mm -hmm. the magic carpet. Top it. Mm. Yeah, I'm very Make good a, at smelling. Mm -hmm. Make a perception check, uh, Donk, at advantage. Roll it. Holy fuck. Wow. I was going to think that was a bondage. <laughs> Holy. Oh. Wow, Dunk's like a fucking bloodhound. I I think he's got it, and you see that Donk literally turns and he just starts <laughs> beelining, <laughs> and Ricky starts running to keep up with him. Come on, girls, let's go. Hey, this way. Oh, I can smell. I can smell the animal and you poop. Get you get over to a section that's just a bit outside, uh, like, the farthest edge. So, gold grain is set up in, like, a big circle, but there's, like, a little, like, nub that comes off the side of it to house stuff for, like, a stock show or exchange, that kind of thing. <coughs> and a lot of it is just animals over there, where they're storing a lot of animals. And as soon as you get there, you notice that there's a little goblin. He's a little green skin, big ears, a um, <clears throat> little chubby, little chubby guy. He turns around... And the moment he sees Ricky, he literally turns to run. What are you guys doing? I cost come on. <laughs> oh, <really? laughs> Am I close enough, actually? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's it. Uh... <laughs> Grovel. <laughs> Grovel? Yeah. Oh, okay. Always grovel. Ooh. Never anything else. It's fun to watch people fall to their knees. <laughs> oh, you rolled a three. Um <clears throat> Okay, the sec you literally you literally run up and the second he turns to run, you go grovel and you guys hear it like echo throughout this sort of area and he immediately turns and gets on his knees and just is quiet. Like he's literally just bowing in front of you. Nasma, what are you doing? But yeah, I'm just watching this happen. Like, Ramleth was so quick with it. I was gonna shout, hey, stop. <laughs> You're like, hey, stop, and he just stops after she's yeah, like, already like <laughs> yeah. And Ricky was like, he turns to Ramleth, good catch. <laughs> right, don't get down here. Okay. Don't go fly his carpet down. In front, right in front of the guy, in the front, in front of the goblin. I need you to get off because I need you to pick him up. Okay, I'll hop down and pick up the goblin. You uh. Pick him up. He only weighs like <laughs> twenty pounds. 
<laughs> he's 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 gonna he's gonna say in goblin and be like hello my name is dunk and i'm going to be your interrogator today <laughs> anything you say can it will be used against you in the court of ricky <laughs> uh ricky looks down at him <clears throat> all right shovel snot we're going to the river and he looks up and you can see in his eyes, they immediately start to tear up. <laughs> oh, these are the legs we were going to break. Yeah. <laughs> no, this is the body we're going to drown and leave in the river. Gotcha. <laughs> it looks up at you like, please don't. <laughs> you know what he wants. Give well, it to him, shovel snot. Well, Ramleth, I need you to turn your spell off, please. We've got him. Okay. He's good to go. I, I need him to talk to me. Donk, have at yeah. it. Okay. <laughs> Wait, are we at the river? Uh, you're able to. Yeah, there's there's a bunch of like capillaries and other rivers that they use to farm here. So. Okay. Okay, shovel's not. You're going in the water now. <laughs> that, no, <laughs> and he'll just slowly is, lower him. Is, stop! 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 Pipa. Okay. Wait, I'm not I supposed don't. to take orders from you. <laughs> He'll keep lowering him. <laughs> He'll look at Riki. He keeps on getting him lower and lower and closer to the water. Just dunk him in for a moment and then pull him out. Okay. Dunk. <laughs> Riki, I understand that you're upset with me. And I want you to understand. The goal is in the bank. It's us, Mark. I'll give you the key to my safety deposit box. You can take it. I don't want to die. What's in the safety deposit box? I would assume it's either gold or something that's worth a lot of money. But this little guy should know that if it's not what he says it is, that literally I will throw you to hell. I will put you in a hole that goes to hell, and you will never return. Mm. He's like, I am willing. Okay. I'll give you the key to my safety deposit box, and then I will give you the money. I have some of it. I don't have all of it, but I have some of it. Here, 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 here. He's like, I need you to let go of my arms, donk. I just need you to let me go for a minute. I don't take orders from you. You're not my manager. <laughs> <laughs> Ricky looks at Doc and he goes, well, just slap him until he drops it or something. Okay. <laughs> he'll, just, he'll hold him up with one hand and just kind of sl slap him around. <laughs> well, Dungeons oh, there it is, cults. and he points down as, like, a small coin purse hits the ground. <clears throat> Ricky walks over, picks it up, looks inside. Well, shovel snot, it turns out that you still owe me half. I'm not taking your stupid safety deposit box unless you got, like, a flak tree or something else really valuable in there. Um, no. So you owe me half. Same time, six months, I'll see you. If you leave here, I will know, and I will find you. And next time, it won't be nearly as pleasant, because as you know right now, your life is only worth about 4,000 gold. So, you have six months. Let's go, Dunk. Put him down. Okay. As he puts him down, he'll, he'll ask him in Goblin, what did, did, Were you a bad gambler or something? How did you rack up 4,000 gold debt? No, Dunk, it was 8,000, and he oh. took four of it, and yes, I gambled. Like an idiot, I gambled. And I lost, so I'm working on it right now, literally right now. And he's, like, oh. wiping the water off of his face. Well, uh, no, no hard feelings. I, of, I... Uh, I was just copying what uh, other interrogators did to me, so I kind of know how the whole thing goes. Mm -hmm. What happened to you, Don Donk? I'm oh, I'm a big gambler, too. I understand. 
Ricky looks at you. He's like, Donk, you are an enigma wrapped inside of a question. I oh. don't understand it at all, but it's fine. It's fine. Wait, he'll, he'll, say, he'll say in Goblin, wait, do you understand me? Uh, yes, Donk. I speak oh. nine languages, and Goblin is very simple, comparatively to some of them. Yeah, it's a lot like workish. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's all a bit green, isn't it? Yeah, it's all a lot of hoo oh, and a lot of hmm. Yeah. That's pretty much the way you talk normally, anyway. <laughs> I suppose anyone can understand you regardless. But either way, what are we doing in Gold Grain? We've done my mission. What do you guys want to do? Nazma, what you got planned? You want to see if someone uh, will buy those pretties off you? Yeah, sure. How's your orange juice? Finished? Uh, uh, no. <laughs> Any time that you drink the orange juice, the cup refills automatically. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Do you want some? I would love some. And he takes a swig and he watches it as it refills itself slowly. Is it always is... orange juice? Chicago. No. If you look at it, it's got buttons. And he like looks at the handle he shows you. It's like buttons. This one says milk. This one says water. Milk! <laughs> this, one... <laughs> this one says beer. And you got, is that blood? I can't tell. I can't read it, but it might be blood. Let's Do stay I away from that one. Then he hands you the cup back. Donk, Ramleth, you Me, you. I'll take it. Watch. Ramleth, ta uh, uh, Ramleth the, the wants milk, it. The milk button's broken though. No, Ramleth instantly yes, takes it and no, presses LPM. the milk button. Ramleth instantly it. takes it and presses milk. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, <laughs> does it become like a milk orange mixture? <laughs> what happens when no. I hit it, take it and grab, press the milk? <laughs> uh, it basically washes itself out. And then it, it milk starts coming out of the bottom of the cup. Yippee! Cat falls from the sky and you have to milk its teeth. I'll do it. And fill the cup up. <laughs> Ramless drinks a very nice cold glass of milk. What kind of milk is it? Is it... Is it goat milk or is it cow milk or is it? Is it breast milk? It could be human milk for all we know. Is it sweet? Can I is it warm? Yeah. Uh, does, is Ramoth privy to the type of milk that is in there? Uh, make an animal handling check. check. Yippee! <laughs> <laughs> it's something I know you're not good at. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, I have a plus one. <laughs> It's got to be. <laughs> oh. Why it do does I appear to be. It, it does appear to be cow's milk. It's cow's milk, guys. I swear. I take another swig. <laughs> mm. Sounds like that's that that that's the taste of those other teats. I point at Nazmi. Say you should try drinking this more, so you'll have strong bones. You pathetic, weak, whatever you are. <laughs> I snatch my cup back and I pour the milk out in front of her. It just I refill refills. It with, <laughs> I refill it with orange juice. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Remlet, Do water okay? ganache have bones? Everyone has bones yeah. except for oozes and bugs. Donk. <laughs> Anything oh. that has exoskeleton. I thought maybe you were made of water. What? Why was? Fish how would you be made of water? I'm not. Who knows? About? It's like hard water, you know, like ice. <laughs> Maybe she makes hard water and it has a form. I've seen. You never seen a snowman before. She did you right. <laughs> That's logic I cannot <laughs> fuck with. Donk, like I said, a question wrapped inside of an enigma. Mm -hmm. I don't understand it at all. Mm -hmm. But that's a nice cup. I would give. I'd give you a couple. I'd give you a couple gold for that thing. I'm okay. Thank you, though. Well, do we want to go find someone for your pretties, or what do you want to do? Yeah, sure. Why are you helping yeah, us so let's much? Let's make some money. He wants a cut. I want, yeah, I want. Uh, Ricky, why are you helping no. us so much? Well, because we Ramleth, him. Ramleth, fun fact, right? It pays to know people. <laughs> so, the more adventurers that you know, the more things you can understand and the more stuff you can get into. For example, let's say, let's, let me give you an example as you're like walking <clears throat> farther into town. If you were to come by, let's say, a bunch of stolen equipment or 
equipment from dead adventurers that uh, may or may not have a bounty on it or something. It pays to know someone like me who can wash it, clear it up, make it no longer stolen, and then give you money for it, right? <clears throat> some people would call it fencing. Some people would call it money laundering. It just depends on what you're doing. So it pays to know people who can do things for you. Favors, like sunglasses, right? You didn't know those were a thing until I showed you. It pays to know people. And the fact that you know me makes me a resource to you and then makes you a resource to me. When you mentioned the sunglasses, Ramleth did a little flick of her head to, to yes. give attention to them, but they fall off her face, so she has to bend over to pick them back up. <laughs> We do need to get those adjusted when we get the Sunspire, so they actually fit you. Donk, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Donk would like to uh, when the when the party uh, starts going back. Donk, Donk wants to go back to uh, sh shovel snot, shovel snot, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And he wants to ask him, "Hey, uh, <laughs> is there any good place to gamble here in Gold Green?" <laughs> Even if I were privy to that information, Donk, <clears throat> I'm not telling you because you don't want to get in with these people. Not here. Why not? I've been in with these people before. You have not, Donk. You've not been in with these people. I've and been I... drowned before. Donk. Uh -huh. Don't just go saying that information. Donk. Donk. <laughs> don't Is gamble that... here. I'm not telling you. Go away. Should have left you in the river. <laughs> wow. Uncle sulk back to his party. Uh. Oh, Donk's back. <laughs> he is. <clears throat> Donk left. Donk, what took you so long? I just was having a conversation with my new friend, Shovel Snot. That guy you drowned? I don't think he wants to be friends with you, Donk. No, he understands. It's just a job. I have been drowned by enforcers before, so you know, it, it didn't, I didn't blame them. They're just Donk, doing their job, you Donk, know. What could you possibly have done to do that? Uh, I did some gambling. <laughs> Donk. <clears throat> All right, yeah. Ramleth, Ramleth, and Nasma. Mm-hmm. Any time that you go into civilization, I need you to keep an eye on this man and don't let him gamble. Why do I care if he gambles? Hey, Donk, I'll gamble you for the gauntlet. What? 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 <laughs> Sorry, I actually didn't hear you. What? <laughs> <laughs> I said I'll gamble you for the gauntlet. Oh. Uh, no, I don't think you're supposed to gamble. Uh, people answer. like property. That's called slavery. <laughs> correct answer. Well, oh my god. <laughs> Weird way to get there, but correct answer. That's what you tell anyone that asks. So, mm -hmm. but if you want to put, do you if you want to play dice sometime? I've got some gold. I got some gems. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're gonna have a lot of gold soon. <laughs> Right. So, here we are. And you guys get to this small sort of cart. Uh, there's a small cart parked in between two buildings. Okay? And it's a very luxurious looking cart. It's very tall. And it's very sort of awkward looking. <clears throat> and Ricky walks up and he knocked three times. And uh, you guys wait a second. He's like, hold on. Just wait for it. And a moment later, like a minute or two later, the doors open. And a very tall, like 10 foot tall, lanky man walks out. And he says, those uh, Greetings, <laughs> Ricky. How can I help you, sir? <clears throat> and this guy's very energetic. He has a very large cane. He's dressed in like a three piece suit. He has a top hat. And he has hey. a long white mustache that's been curled multiple times. And he steps out and he looks down at you guys. And Ricky goes, Right. We need to sell some pretties that she got from some guy. Oh, pretties, you say? Shoot me, young 
Water, Ganassi. Show them to me. And he puts out his hand, and his, hand, his fingers are like this long, and they're like, oh, it's, it's, it looks like a person, but you stretched him out. Why do you look like one of those people from those magic mirrors? Because of my cart. I am what they call the menagerist. If you need an outfit to fit a culture or just an outfit to look amazing, you call me. I come to you. I solve your problems. I buy gems. I buy gold. I buy gold in its raw form, and I partake in the magical and arcane nature of anything that can be procured. <laughs> so, show me <coughs> the pretties. And he puts his hand out. Pull the ball out. And I only want to pull out the ones that Mr. Worth didn't describe to me. Okay. I think there was the bloodstone was one of them. Mm -hmm. Um... But I only pull out, like, three of them. Sure. He looks at each of them. Ooh, this is an emerald. And he has a, he, he flicks his head, and, a, and a, a little, like, magnifying glass comes down from the top of that, from the top hat. Hmm. Pure. Un almost unnaturally so. Is that... Uh, oh, we'll buy that one for a thousand. Wait, 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 we want more than that. We want 1,500. Yeah. Do you know what this is? It's very... We look at Ricky. <laughs> Ricky looks at you. He's like, <clears throat> hey. this is your deal. I'm not doing don't, nothing here. Don't, don't ask, ask Sal, Sal, Sal Nazar if he knows what it is. Hey, um... Uh... <laughs> He's just kind of like mumbling to himself. Hey, Sal Nazar, do you know what that is? I can't see it, no. It's fine. Uh, Bram Bramleth is ready to step forward and bullshit. <laughs> she, she, she just she wants to she wants to look mega intimidating against this ten foot man who's much taller than her. <laughs> she, um, she says that is an incredibly rare gem that we went to many hard lengths to 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 obtain. You know, yeah. it's almost priceless, really. The fact that we're willing to said. part with it means that it is worth far more than 1,000 mere coins. Okay. <clears throat> You're looking to haggle, I see. Here's the thing, okay? What I have the upon... Okay. <clears throat> what I had, I have a, uh, 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 an apparatus that tells me exactly what these things are. Would you like to try on this apparatus so you can see it for yourself? I'm not putting any weird hats on my head. I'll do it. I like to wear the hat. Okay. <laughs> uh, he he takes he he everything he does is very wide and very like. He takes his hat off and he turns it around. And he puts it on your head. And he pulls the little spyglass down and it shrinks. It conforms to the size of you. <clears throat> and he puts a little eye of spyglass down and he puts the stone in front of you and a literal information readout as to what it is, is shown on the spyglass, like on the little magnifying glass. Amazing. This is an emerald that is a lich's phylactery. So when liches die, as long as their phylactery is not destroyed, they will regenerate and become brand new. And it literally right. says, in a range, in most cultures, on this plane, it's worth between 800 and 1,200 gold. Oh, wow. This dude wasn't doing a study. Can I peek into my bag and find out what all the other gems are that I took without him really noticing? Don't make a distraction. Uh, okay. Uh, hey, Mr. Hatman, look what I got. And he'll hold this gauntlet up in the air. Oh, interesting. Do you mind? I'm not selling it, though. No, hey, I'm he's looking... my friend. I am not looking to purchase. I'm just looking to look at it. Do you mind if I touch your hand for a moment? Oh, uh, hey, Zelnazar, is it okay if he touches my hand? Of, of course. It's, you can't take it off you. Not without my Okay. Permission. He <laughs> says it's okay. Mm -hmm. 
And he takes a look at it, and he like looks inside of it. Go ahead and make a sleight of hand check for me, Nazma, at advantage. Okay. Oh, me? Sleight of hand at advantage. Uh, okay. Mm-hmm. You gotta be fucking My me. god. Pathetic. <laughs> Let me reroll! <laughs> uh, do you have inspiration? How do you I should have it? inspiration from the last time that we played. I thought Jenkins was the one that got it. Mm. No, I I, I'm, for anyone that's not here, I'm giving it to the party. So you guys have two. <laughs> so if you'd Stealing. like to use your inspiration, you can re-roll it if you'd like. Okay, yes. How do I, what Don't do waste I do? our do fucking inspiration. Roll, 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 roll sleight of hand at advantage again. Normally you only roll one additional dice, but I don't care. <clears throat> Yippee! Oh, wait, you have... Okay, yeah, not that much better. So, um, you look into your bag... And the bloodstone mm-hmm. has a coin associated with it that you've never heard of. The bloodstone itself is worth 970 souls. Okay. And then the, the stone that has, like, rock in it <clears throat> is worth, is worth uh, 930,000 credits. Jesus, okay. Credits. It's a different currency that yeah. you're unfamiliar with. And the other ones are about 500 gold. <clears throat> the regular gemstones. The, the other ones are actual regular gemstones. So the, the Lich's Factory and then the other two that he explained to you are just regular gemstones. So it's about 2,000 gold between the three of those. And then the other ones are in a currency you don't understand. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Is it now smarter then to sell the regular gemstone and keep the Lich's phylactery then? Is, do we, uh, ha- we ever have a purpose for it? <laughs> this is a general consensus for the group. So you're asking in meta, like out of game, yeah, what yeah. everyone thinks about this. Yeah, because I don't know, like, I don't know the realm of, I just don't know what that would ever do for us. And I don't know if there is anything that it would do for us. I have no idea about any of that shit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a lich's phylactery? Yeah. Devin was saying that, like... Uh, I, I would imagine that anybody, uh, like, maybe Donk would be able to do it, it uh, use, use it in some way. Uh, if oh my god, this is step two to become Donk was a lot friend. more powerful. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> uh, I don't think it's something. I feel like it's actually something that might be too powerful for us to use easily. Okay. All right. I feel like we're better off with the gold. Okay. All right. Well, then, uh, is the commotion done? Is Dunk finished his distraction? Dunk, Dunk, we're all good. You can stop. We're all good. No, oh, he's. Uh, I'm being inspected right now. Oh. How's it going, Salazar? Mm-hmm. Oh, it's fine. He didn't. We talked for a moment. Um, yeah. We'll Would you him. make us Salazar, big man? <laughs> oh, he's fantastic. I don't really know. This is like ancient, sort of strange esoteric ideas that I am unfamiliar with. I'd like to spend a day with him if I could, but I cannot. He is attached to your arm, and there's nothing I can do about it. But either way, let's get back to the sale. And he turns to you. Yeah. He turns back to Nazma, and he says, Nazma? Yes, I know your name. I was told by the glove. Oh, that's so kind of Salnazar to introduce us then. Um, we'll take the 1,000 for the emerald. No, and... we shouldn't. T- we want more. We still want more. Why should we trust the value of a hat? Of a hat? What are, the hat is, it could easily just be something you made to get low prices. You could, you tell us that it means the actual value. That doesn't mean that's true. Could just be set up by you. Look, the thing is, we don't have anyone else to sell it to. So unless you want to hang on to it. You're so like... bad at haggling. <laughs> Ramlet is so annoyed. <laughs> Nah, I, I just kicked bad. Nazma. I was like, shut up! <laughs> uh, Ramlet, it's her gemstone. If she wants to sell it, she can sell it. It's the 
Gold for the party. Ugh. What? Wait, am I getting some of that gold? <laughs> Yeah, I would assume over. that's up to your party member right? if she's willing to be generous or not. Joint bank account, my shout. <laughs> <laughs> but Ramlock has to call me Sugar Mummy for the rest of the game. Fuck I mean, yourself. For the rest of the <laughs> <laughs> I'll call you Mummy whenever you want. But <laughs> <laughs> I can't, yeah, as soon as you start talking, Nazma, I kick you. I say, and I look back at the big old tall guy. I'm like, look. I'll meet you in the middle. One two fifty. It's not even worth one two fifty. Ask your compatriot. Is it? It, it, it does say the max value is one thousand two hundred. One thousand two hundred. We'll take that. <laughs> I will give you eleven hundred for it, and I will give you five fifty for the others. Wait, I have a question. What are you gonna use it for? Oh, it me? Potential? Yeah. I am going to devour it. I'm going to turn it into something else. Because for me, I am an extra planar being. I am not human, as it might appear. <clears throat> I am a sort of creature that goes between planes. And my form of food is energy. And the lich's phylactery has an inordinate amount of energy. And the actual conversion rate for me would be the phylactery equals about 10 or 12 years, depending on how efficient I am with my travels and other things like that. So magic items and gemstones have an enormous amount of magical energy stored within them. Hence the reason a lot of times your spells require gemstones. So I devour gemstones and phylacteries and other magic items in order to maintain my life. Hmm. Wait, so does that mean... Does that mean it's uh, invaluable uh, uh, to him? So we should, meta, we should charge him all. Meta question: Aren't liches uh, always evil in this universe? No. Okay. Uh, then what happens to the persons who owns the phylactery? Then if oh, you he eat be, it, he or she will be notified that their phylactery has been destroyed, and they must make a new one, which is quite a process, as far as I understand. But that's the price that you pay for literal immortality. What's the process of making one? I don't know. I'm not a lich. Oh. Hmm. Mm. Wait. Goo puddle. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to touch uh, you guys, but I'll stand near. <laughs> you know, this is worth a good amount of gold to this guy, but it might be worth more to the lich guy himself. You know, he would be losing his phylactery. We kind of got him over the barrel, you know. Do you think, what if he starts attacking us, though? If we go to him and we're like, hey, we have your phylactery, pay us for it. it that's a good point. I don't think I'm strong enough to beat a lich yet. No, yet. I could do it. Well, I mean, well, we do. recent history shows online. That was, um... Hey, R Ricky, Ricky. Was, right, what? It's fucked up. Yeah. Do Do you know any <laughs> liches? Donk, I already told you that I know a guy who's a subject matter expert. I'm not answering the question, well, but I'm letting you know that I know. Do you know, know that that meant he was a lich or not? What? I mean, if we have a lich's phylactery, do you think he would? You know, if we gave it back to him, do you think he would give us more money than this guy? The thing about yeah. liches and their phylacteries is that usually they bury them or hide them somewhere where they'll never be found. The fact that you have one means that, technically speaking, Nazma and Ramleth are correct. It would be invaluable to said lich, because it only works if you're on the same plane. And unless the dragon or whatever you interacted with was a lich, uh. no clue. And he also did give it to you for free. He gave it to you willy-nilly. Which yeah. is also a little bit upsetting. But here's the thing. When we get to Sunspire, we can find out who's it is. Can they, can they track their phylacteries? Would they I know absolutely that? can. They might oh. even be on the way right now. Yeah, we got a big tracking. Oh, this is bad. This is bad. We're... We're selling stolen goods, basically, right now. And this why is you, our fence. Why do you think I'm here? 
And and if they find out, we sell it to him. He's gonna eat it. Then the lich might know that we were the ones who sold it to him. I already told you, Doc. It... I'll handle it. Okay. <laughs> Can we just get rid of it, Dunk? Just sell it off? Uh, sure, if you want to. That's fine with me. I'm just saying, it sounds like a no-win scenario. The Lich yeah. is going to be mad one way or another, so... Yeah, well, let's not face him. I say we sell it. 1,100. And another gemstone. One other, gems one other gemstone? <laughs> yeah. You can take your picking of any of the cheap ones. Do you have more? Yeah. If you show them to me, I can tell you what they are if you're curious. <laughs> and he, he, slowly, he slowly takes his hat back and puts it down and it grows back to the proportion. Do I remember which <laughs> ones are the the... Yeah. Lower value ones? Okay, I just pull out a random. Lower well, it's not that they're low. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The lower value ones are something like a sapphire or amethyst or something. They're just not. They're sapphire. just regular gemstones. I'm just giving <clears> the <throat> sapphire one. Oh, just a standard sapphire. It's well made and sure. I'll give you okay. 600 for it. Sounds good. You got any more? Not that I'm willing to part with. Can I look at them anyway? <laughs> I just want to see. I'm a creature. I'm a curious creature. And I cannot help myself. I can smell them. I can smell making gemstones in your bag. Okay. <laughs> I only show. I only Is this guy bothering you, ma'am? <laughs> the lower valued ones, but I don't let him touch them. Do you show him the, the different ones, the unique ones? No, not the ones that like are worth credits or anything like that. You show him the other low value, like the amethyst. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Interesting. And, and while I'm showing them, I I'll give like you six hundred for that one. I whisper to Rambler, and I go, "Do you think we can trust him for information and to not harm us?" I don't trust anyone. <laughs> I whisper back. I, <laughs> I look at her and I go, "It's a donk." Do you think we can trust? <laughs> <laughs> for information and to not harm us. <laughs> I think this guy eats energy. Uh, I think he's pretty scary, but we got uh we got the kingpin with us, so I think we're okay. You can always charge him to see it, you know. Uh, there was once a uh, uh, there was once a traveling caravan that came to my village, and that's what they did. They set up a big tent, and they had a lot of different things that were going on. And in the one of the things they charged you before you even went in the tent to see it, it was the marvelous uh, thingy. I don't I, I don't know because I didn't have any money. I couldn't go inside. Yeah, that's sick. All right, brother, I'll show you the infinity stones. You pay up. <laughs> okay, I will give you 50 gold per stone. How many stones do I have? You have two extra stones he hasn't seen yet. <clears throat> 100 each. So I... Sure. No. Oh, fuck. I didn't even have to give you a reason. All right, so so far, we're selling the emerald for 1,100, the sapphire for 600. I've put all the other basic gems back in, and I pull out the, the other two rare ones. But I don't let him touch it again. That he looks at money. it, and he, and he flips down the thing. Interesting. <gasps> oh, oh, the bloodstone. <laughs> the thing about the bloodstone is if I could... Ooh, you could literally see, like, drool coming from the sides of his mouth. He's if like... But you get a, you get a little <laughs> bit of... Just... <laughs> so... How about this? I will... Let you have the rest of the stones. I will pay you 8,000 gold for the bloodstone. <gasps> no, I'm good. Thank you, though. You don't understand. I will give How? you 10,000 gold for the bloodstone. Why? Wow! <laughs> because the man it was made from had, a hun had over 150 years left. Which means all of those years get transferred to me when I devour it. I will give you 10,000 gold for the bloodstone. 
bloodstones be used for anything else? Are you asking him? Yes. Sorry, yes. I don't know. All I can see is that thing, and I need it. I need it. How many years was the the first object? <laughs> Eleven. The phylactery? Eleven. Yeah. The phylactery is like between ten and twelve years. Yeah. Ten and twelve. Okay. Yeah, because he said that out loud. Um, oh. If you wait, say, if you were willing to pay one point two k for ten years, and this is worth a hundred and fifty yeah. years You're plus. Like hundred a year. You're not paying enough, buddy. <laughs> it's also not a normal gemstone that you can use for a lot of things, as far as I understand. Well, you were going it. to eat it, so we're going with the same yes, value I here. Yes, I was, but the intrinsic value of the emerald is also covered in that, because you could technically turn it into other things, which is why it's more expensive. But you weren't going to. So if we're taking uh -oh. out the value of how much you were going to pay to eat it, which you would do with this as well, we're going to need more than 10000 How about this? I'll give you 10,000 gold for it, and I will make you each an outfit to protect you against elements up to and including any plane that you go into will protect you elementally from those planes, meaning that you could go into a plane where the standard temperature is 100 degrees below zero and you can survive. I will give you elemental protection suits of clothing. And an I IOU. An IOU for what? Who knows? <laughs> but you got 150 years to pay it out, brother. Don Donkle, Donkle saddle up to uh to to Ricky. Hey, uh, the things are getting a little heated here. Is this guy? There's no chance this guy's gonna get mad and like eat us all whole I, like an anaconda or something, right? I am unfamiliar with what he actually is. And I'm uh -oh. quite thinking at this point that we need to walk away. Yeah, I think that to... we should let the stone go because he seems to be getting agitated. And I've never yeah, seen I think him he's like going to eat us. I've never seen him like this before. I'd take 10,000 and just leave. Yeah, I want that outfit. I remember what Ricky said about where the pit virus might be. I, Naz, I turned to Nazma. I'm like, I want this. I want the, I want the IOU. 10,000, the outfits and the IOU, and you get yourself a deal. I will not give you an IOU. I'll throw the emerald in. I will give you <laughs> 10,000 gold and outfits. Uh, I want the outfit. Uh, nah. Nazma. Nazma, I don't, I don't think these kind of creatures oh, like to, uh, to we'll owe people I'm anything. His, the, you can literally see the veins on his neck begin to bulge. <laughs> all right, I put all the other gemstones back in and I, uh, I say deal. Deal for the bloodstone. He takes the bloodstone and he licks it. He's like, oh, and you can see like a light teal energy pull off the bloodstone and go into his mouth. <clears throat> and he goes, oh, okay, I feel better now. And he puts it into his pocket. Yeah. He goes, okay, one at a time into the cart. Let's get you fitted. You first. And he points at Ramlin. Yeah, <laughs> our super down. <laughs> Um, and I think, uh, I think that's where we're going to lead this episode because okay. I will do descriptions. It's going to take a bit for me to role play this specific, specific section out, yep. but it's a good place just to leave it for the time being. Right. Why do I feel like we just created <laughs> a, a potential <laughs> yeah. world ending threat? <laughs> yeah. Here I was worried about giving you something for 10 to 11 years, but I was like, oh, 150. No worries, brother. Take it. And an outfit. <laughs> I get a bowler outfit, I'm so happy. <laughs>